everybody. I'm Dr. Tan Yiping, consultant obstetrician and gynecologist. So this is my regular nine, uh, Sunday 9 p.m. video. Okay, thanks for joining me again. Yes, today we are going to continue with the series of uh, prevention of cancer and today we are going to talk about ovarian cancer, okay? So I think just to recap uh, certain principles on prevention of cancer that I uh, mentioned uh, earlier on, that is number one, we have primary prevention and we have secondary prevention. So what's the difference between primary prevention and secondary prevention? Primary prevention is we want to do something to make sure that to prevent cancer from ever coming from ever coming so if like for example cervical cancer if you were to take um, vaccination it will never come okay so um, that is primary prevention um, then secondary prevention is if it come I want to know early I want to know early so I can do something to make sure that my cancer do not become uh, full-blown cancer so that I can pre uh, get well can get treatment and then get well and then get fully treated and survive forever and ever and ever i won't die from cancer so that is secondary prevention so um the last uh, talk i was talking about uterus cancer and i mentioned one thing if god were to give you a chance to to choose a cancer always choose uterus cancer because uterus cancer is always early detection tell you very early long before become cancer already well, all the signs will come and then as long as you go and see doctor get treated it's easy to treat because uterus is not an important organ you can remove it you won't die it won't affect your life so uh, it's easy to treat and that's therefore the survival rate is very high but today I'm going to talk about ovarian cancer so you if God were to give you the same question again just make sure, make sure, make sure, don't choose ovarian cancer. Ovarian cancer has a very bad um, uh, prognosis, which means that the survival rate is usually not very high. Partly it's because most people, when they know they have ovarian cancer, they are late stage. They are usually stage 3, stage 4. Typical is stage 4. Typical. In fact, majority of uh, ovarian cancer that I see in my clinic day to day, day to day, it's stage four. In fact, I just saw one just shortly before the Hari Raya as well. Um, very um, sad case in the sense that she knows that her tummy is growing bigger and bigger and bigger, but somehow she didn't come and see doctor immediately. And by the time she came to see me, she's like seven months pregnant already. So that is ovarian cancer. Ovarian cancer typically, uh, a lot of women realize the tummy is growing bigger like as though they are pregnant, as though they are pregnant and cancer grow very fast because by the time they feel that the tummy has grown so big, it is usually already full, full blown cancer and because cancer grow very fast, so they find the tummy growing very fast, bigger and bigger, just like pregnant, you know. One day you look at your tummy, look like four months. Next moment, another two weeks, it looks like five months. Another two weeks, you look like six months pregnant. So when she came to me, it was like a seven-month-old pregnancy. And I have also seen uh, young girls coming to me uh, with very, very big tummy. You know, the mother look at the daughter's tummy and see, hey, why my daughter's tummy getting bigger and bigger? Is she pregnant? Uh, you know? then, then the mothers are very suspicious and question the daughter. The daughter say nothing. But you're still suspicious because you look at your daughter's tummy, look like pregnant, you know. Uh, and usually when they come and see, see me, uh, it's again a uh, full-blown cancer. So let's talk about ovarian cancer. Ovarian cancer is a very uh, much complicated uh, topic to talk about because there's so many types of ovarian cancer, so many types. So some people when they ask ovarian, uh, they will say, uh, I have a cyst. A uh, cyst is normal, right? I heard a lot of people have cysts. Yeah, it's normal, but ovarian cancer is also cyst. So first thing you need to know, all ovarian cancers are cysts. Although not all cysts, are ovarian cancer but all ovarian cancer are cysts so doesn't mean that all oh, doctors say I got an ovarian cyst you're very happy you feel okay but you need to understand that all ovarian cancer are also cysts because I often get this statement from uh, patients they will say that uh, I heard uh, uh, ovarian cysts is very common a lot of people have and it's okay don't have to worry about it uh, yes la majority is like that but all ovarian cancer 
are cysts to start off with. There are some form of cysts. And almost every type of cyst can potentially become cancer except for physiological cysts. Physiological cysts are ovarian cysts that many women have on and off. Come, go, come, go. And these type of cysts, we normally not so worried because they come, they go. This is what we call physiological cysts. It's all due to hormonal imbalance or part and parcel of our hormonal changes, pregnancy changes uh, that causes it. But the real cyst, that means the real ovarian cyst that is there forever and forever and doesn't go away, every single ovarian cyst has a potential to be cancer. Every type of ovarian cyst has a cancer partner. So like uh, chocolate cyst, we like to talk about endometriosis. No, I talk about endometriosis a lot. So when it's endometriosis, it also has its own partner cancer. And other types, any type of ovarian cyst also can have its partner cancer. Dermoid cyst can have its partner cancer. In fact, many, 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 many types of cysts, even cysts that we thought should be very, very safe, also can have its partner cancer. Uh, a couple of weeks back, I had this lady um, she had an ovarian cyst, uh, sorry, she didn't have an ovarian cyst, she has a cyst outside the ovary. Because when we, we talk about ovarian cyst, we talk about cyst inside the ovary, but in this lady, she, her cyst is outside the ovary. So normally we say outside the ovary should be quite safe, but then uh, she kept it for almost like 10 years. She didn't see me for 10 years. And then one day she feel the tummy is very, very pain. So she came to see me and then she feels she's like about four months pregnant. And then I just operated on her about two weeks back and then her result came back as borderline cancer. So it's borderline cancer, luckily, man. Borderline, so it's still not cancer, it's still borderline, still can, can cure, can treat. Okay, so, um, so even since that apparently we think it is very, very safe, uh, 10 years ago, it was very, very small, so we don't think it was a problem, but each and every cyst that stay in our body long enough all has a potential to become cancer. That's why sometimes I also see some cysts that, like dermoid cyst, is so common and very common among young women as well. But I always tell them there's a partner cancer, all dermoid cysts, even though it looks like a very nice cyst, not much of a problem, but you keep long enough, it can still be a cancer. So I always tell them, you know, when you're free, just get it out. You know, it's not urgent, but when you're free, please get it out. Don't keep any cysts in your ovary. Because why each and every cyst that you have in the ovary have a partner cancer. It can always have a chance of progressing into cancer. And ovarian cancer, there's many types. So it they have one cancer that is a partner to a certain cyst. So this cyst, although we know it is a safe cyst, benign cyst, non-cancerous cyst, you keep long enough, they have another partner that is uh, equivalent one. This type of cyst will become this type of cancer. This type of cyst will become this type of cancer. This type of cyst will become this type of cancer. And ovarian cysts can grow even in very, very young children because uh, ovarian cysts can form at uh, birth. It can be congenital. It can be inborn, so they can even form in very, very young girls. Uh, so these young girls can also get ovarian cancer when they are young, whether they are 8 years old, 10 years old, 14 years old, 16 years old, whatever also can. So basically, we have uh, uh, two types of ovarian cancer. One is from the inborn group one, those that they have small cysts when they are very young and slowly, slowly turn into big cysts and slowly, slowly become cancer. And usually these uh, cancers usually form when they are very young, when, uh, maybe in primary school or even in secondary school. And there's the other group of cancer which we say it comes in a later life, that means it's not inborn. And those are the ones where it's very much linked to things like endometriosis, dermoid cysts, uh, and also simple, simple, although dermoid cyst is also considered inborn, but they usually develop cancer at a much later age. As well as uh, those simple cysts, uh, sometimes we call it simple cysts, so called, uh, because when doctors call simple cysts, means, cyst, means one nice and round and is pure black color cyst, you know, the cyst is totally clear black. Even simple cysts can still potentially become cancer if we keep it long enough. So I've also seen a couple of very, very old ladies. They come to me when the tummy become very big and they tell me, oh, I know I got cysts 
uh, doctor told me uh, that cyst is okay one, it's a friendly cyst. So they had this friendly cyst all their life. So what happens when they have this friendly cyst all their life until after menopause, you know, as they grow older, they start to forget about the cyst because they have probably checked with the gynae at least 30, 50 times already and the doctor always says it's a simple cyst, it's a friendly cyst but at the age of 70, 80, uh, that's when it becomes cancer law. so ovarian cancer usually starts with a cyst and every type of cyst in this world also can potentially become cancer so when you have cyst, you must make sure that you keep monitoring and don't keep it too long okay don't keep it too long is the, the thing I always tell women especially if you already menopause some cysts go away after menopause but after menopause if the cyst is still there don't keep lah when you're about 55, 60 if the cyst is still there the better remove it at 60 than to wait for 70 okay so that is uh, one thing about ovarian cyst cancer okay so let's talk about how um, ovarian cysts come about so number one, you must know how it come right. So if not how to prevent one, or that one I really cannot help because nobody knows because it's inborn. So they are born with it, they are born with the cyst. And we rarely bring little girls to go and see gynae to scan every year to see whether got cyst right. So most of the time it comes quite bad. But fortunately, fortunately it's very rare. It is very rare. Even as a gynae, I probably will only see one in 10 years or 20 years. So it is very, very rare, okay? So let's talk about the commoner cancer, the commoner ovarian cancer, which is uh, two types. Uh. One is uh, linked to endometriosis. That one is getting more and more common because endometriosis is getting more and more common. So that one is linked to endometriosis. And uh, the other type of cancer, which is just the normal ovarian cyst type of cancer, uh, we call the epithelial cancer. Epithelial cancer is the other group that is also getting more and more common with women today. And I will explain why. When you soon understand the reason of why you get the cancer, you will know why women today get more ovarian cancer. Okay, so um, the reason is, okay, you understand that we ovulate, right? We ovulate every month. So what happens when we ovulate? When we ovulate, uh, actually, the ovary actually rupture rupture, burst, burst to release the egg, burst to release the egg. So when the ovary burst to release the egg, it is actually at a very vulnerable state because it is exposed. Anything can go in, can go in into the, the egg. So if you have a virus that come in, if you have a bacteria that come in, or you have toxins that enter, just before it closes back, it will take the virus, it will take the bacteria, and it will take the toxin. And all these things can cause the cells inside the ovary to mutate, to mutate and eventually can form cancer. That's why we know one thing, if you don't ovulate, then your chances of ovarian cancer is very, very low. So how not to ovulate? How to make sure I don't ovulate? There are some women that rarely ovulate. That's why they are very protected from ovarian cancer. Who are the women who rarely ovulate? Number one, women who continuously get pregnant, breastfeeding. You know, pregnant, nine months, you don't ovulate, right? And then when you breastfeed, you also have no menses, you don't ovulate. So women who continuously pregnant and, and breastfeed and pregnant, and breastfeed and pregnant and breastfeed have like 10 20 children ah very safe we know this group of women they have very very low chance of ovarian cancer the other group are women who take contraceptive pill birth control pill birth control pill as in the lecture i taught the, my live video on birth control pill birth control pill prevents ovarian cancer. Why? Because let's say if I take birth control pill all my life, I take birth control pill all my life, or, or most of my life, let's say from the age of 35, I don't want to have baby, I take birth control pill all the way until I'm 55. Then I don't ovulate. Lor. For that 20 years, I don't ovulate. So my ovary don't burst. Nothing can get in. I'm safe. So 
so we know people on birth control pill research have proven long term birth control pill prevent you from ovarian cancer uh, pregnancy the more children you have the longer you breastfeed prevent you from birth uh, ovarian cancer because you don't ovulate so the key is I don't want you to ovulate so if you can make sure you don't ovulate then you don't have cancer so simple what else prevent ovarian cancer you see from the uterus for the, the bacteria or the virus to go to the ovary it has to go through the tubes you have to go through the uterus and the tube so we know women without uterus also less ovarian cancer why the virus the bacteria the toxin cannot get in ma. you see women is very special we all, I always say women and men is different men whatever is inside their tummy and whatever is outside there's no connection but women there is a connection because we need the sperm to go in to get us pregnant so let's say I get rid of that connection which is the uterus then the virus the bacteria all cannot go in no? so good cannot go in that also prevent you from ovarian cancer what else tying your tubes you know your old your oh, after they go through the uterus they have to go through the tubes so some of you maybe you don't want to get pregnant anymore you go and do surgery to tie your tubes clip your tubes remove your tubes there are many ways some people just put two clips some people uh, tie some people cut so doesn't matter which one you use it also prevent ovarian cancer because then the virus the bacteria the toxin all cannot go through yes yeah, so that's the way because it's very difficult to totally prevent bacteria virus or toxin to get through although popular toxins that people always talk about is what powder you know sometimes uh, especially in the past we rarely do it nowadays because we usually warn people not to do it anymore but in the past a lot of women like to put powder down there you know around their vagina they just put powder into the into the perineum just to make it you know private part just to make it feel good smell good but then they don't realize that the toxin can actually accidentally go into the vagina go into the uterus and then go into the tubes and then finally reach the ovary and in fact they actually quite uh, if you google uh, there's actually a few uh, big uh, uh, lawsuit especially in US where the women who got ovarian cancer sued Johnson baby Johnson powder you know are you okay uh, I pity Johnson baby Johnson powder la. the powder has been there for a long long time nobody knew it caused cancer but then it's only recently we knew it caused cancer but women have been using it for like 20 30 years you know so but anyway there's a lawsuit and they won because it is proven it is proven that uh, powder can cause cancer so stop using powder la, huh? okay so powder can cause cancer in uh, ovary cancer because the toxin can actually go all the way in in fact powder has been linked to a lot of other cancers as well so don't use powder la, huh? okay so number one is powder the other one that we know about is over, uh, HPV virus also we are now seeing HPV virus uh, if we were to get someone with ovarian cancer we can actually detect HPV virus around the ovary so we also think that HPV virus could be also one of the viruses that uh, cause the ovary to cause cancer but it may not be the only virus available but we also know HPV virus got vaccine oh, which is the same virus that cause uh, cervical cancer, vagina cancer, vulva cancer you see one virus cause so many cancer so if you haven't got yourself vaccinated please go and get yourself vaccinated okay so you can vaccine up to 45 years old so if you haven't got yourself vaccinated please go and vaccinate uh, yourself with uh, this HPV virus okay so um, that is primary prevention so primary prevention is to prevent the cancer from ever coming so you prevent the cancer from ever coming it's very simple don't ovulate so either you get pregnant a lot a lot breastfeed a lot a lot or you take birth control either birth control pill birth control injection any form of birth control that prevent ovulation if you take long term it can prevent you from ovarian cancer and if you can stop the passage block the passage 
uh, don't allow any of the bacteria and virus to go in so removing the uterus you re and, and tying up your tubes is uh, one of the ways to prevent ovarian cancer and last of all is we don't want to use anything that have toxin uh, in our private part another thing is also uh, don't use um, what you call that uh, uh, yeah go and get yourself vaccinated against HPV virus so this is primary prevention for ovarian cancer then now we are talk about secondary prevention okay secondary prevention is to make sure I detect early because when I detect early I can treat early lor. then it's quite simple as I earlier mentioned all cysts has a cancer if you have a cyst treat it lah don't keep too long keep one year two years three years five don't just keep keeping it and keeping it and keeping it and keeping it I mean yeah a lot of women try to keep your cysts but if you keep your cysts make sure you monitor very closely every half a year or one year you must make sure you scan don't go and wait three years five years some of you are hurt don't know where a uh, pap smear do three years yes pap smear you three years but ovary is every year so we know when you go and see a gynae for pap smear you don't just do pap smear you do pap smear you check your breasts you check your ovaries you scan you do a lot of other things so ovary need to scan six months to one year so go and scan it every year okay so when you have a cyst you have to monitor 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 but last call is after menopause after menopause some of the cysts will go away if your cyst cannot go away don't keep your cyst if you like to keep your cyst and monitor 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 as long as your cyst is less than five centimeter you are safe anything more than five centimeter don't keep don't keep your cyst better remove after all cyst now very easy can do scope just a small little small three holes go in laparoscopic keyhole surgery minimal invasive surgery remove the cyst keep for what okay so if you have a cyst that you keep for so long cannot go away no matter what medicine you have tried lah, some of you have tried anything everything still there don't keep lah huh? okay you can try medicine i know you always hear somebody got cyst take medicine go away yes some cyst can go away i also know endometriosis cyst can go away if you take medicine okay physiological cyst sure can go away whether you take medicine you don't, don't take medicine also can go away so whoever give you any uh, medicine or you know supplement and go away you think it's a supplement work on you but actually no it's because you had physiological cyst physiological cyst eventually go away one so doesn't matter you want to try this try that but if you have tried everything and the cyst is still there and you have got more than five centimeter you need to remove the cyst that is the first thing you need to know number two if you have a small cyst even let's say three centimeter two centimeter but after menopause five years ten years sixty years already cyst still there uh, better remove better remove the cyst when you are 60 then to keep until it become cancer because you need to understand oh, now this uh, lifespan very long uh. okay I, I, I keep telling people your lifespan minimum 80 to 90 already because for today women and men are living to 80s already okay the average lifespan is 80 that is provided you are now 60 70 80 you probably live to 80 if you are 20 30 40 you will live to 90 already by then why? Because when I was in my 20s, Malaysia population lived to 70s. Now in, I'm in my 40s, population lived to 80s. By the time I reach 60s, the population will be 90s. By the time I reach 80s, population go to 100 already. Okay, you understand? Lifespan is growing longer and longer. So your ovarian cyst when you're 60, you keep until you're 70, 80, sure lah, become cancer. So don't keep. Because 70, 80, then come and do big surgery. High risk, right? 60, young and healthy, just get it away. Lah. After all, it's just a small surgery. Small surgery to remove a small cyst. Better than wait until it becomes cancer, then you do a big surgery to remove a big cyst. Okay? So, secondary prevention is that. And there are no other secondary prevention because ovarian cyst, oh, no symptom. You see, uterus cancer is very nice. Uterus cancer before it come before it become cancer three to six months it already tell you because bleeding because you already have bleeding you already have bleeding you must go and see doctor right then once you see doctor you you get it treated uh, you won't get cancer so simple but ovarian cancer no sign no sign 
by the time you have the sign is when you feel you're pregnant already your tummy look like four months pregnant next thing is five months pregnant next thing is six months pregnant you feel your tummy growing bigger and bigger like a pregnant woman but unfortunately by the time your your cyst grow until so big like a pregnant woman you are minimum stage three to four cancer already it's too late already it's already too late already so there's no early sign of ovarian cancer so there's no way you can detect ovarian cancer early except make sure you go and see the gynae every year so when do we actually see gynae every year that is one question that a lot of people also ask okay for pap smear we say the moment you are sexually active so people always promote pap smear they say pap smear must do pap smear must do there's a lot of promotion of pap smear so when people ask when must see gynae every year after you start having sex okay the key is that after having sex ah, not after give birth ah. you know long long ago people say after you give birth that's be because long long ago ah, people don't have sex before marriage and the moment they get married they immediately get pregnant but women nowadays is different so cannot use that one one year after your first time you have sex you need to do pap smear let's say so when we tell that then you get caught with women who are never sexually active they never had sex they never had boyfriend they never get married so when do they need to start seeing gynae 35 years old and above because that's when ovarian cysts tend to come 35 years and above so if you are 35 years and above whether you had sex or no sex whether you are married or not married whether you have children or no children you need to see gynae every year to at least have a scan of your pelvis and also your breast because breast cancer will also start to come from 35 years and above so as i say when you see a gynae it's not just for pap smear you see a gynae for pap smear you see a gynae for ultrasound scan of your uterus and your ovaries you see a gynae for your breast so you see a gynae for everything so you better see gynae every year don't just think about pap smear only because pap smear yes you can wait two to three years but everything else you need to see gynae every year okay so yeah so this is the ways to prevent ovarian cancer so now you realize one thing you have gone through i've gone through with you cervical cancer uterus cancer and ovarian cancer but Cervical cancer is a bit different because it's very, very much related to sexual intercourse and viral infection. But uterus cancer and ovarian cancer, there's one thing in common, one thing in common. That is, you see or not, if they, you go on birth control, you can prevent. If you go on, if you give birth a lot, you can prevent. If you uh, breastfeed more, you can prevent. That's why, in general, I always tell a lot of women one very simple thing because women like to ask doctor ah, why i got fibroid doctor ah, why i got cyst doctor ah, why i got polyp doctor ah, why i got breast lump Ayya. my answer is always very simple women if don't give birth have to grow something one you either grow a baby or you grow something okay so you don't want to grow a baby then you will grow something either in your uterus your ovary or in your breast and what I mean by don't want to have babies, don't want to grow babies. Huh? I'm not talking about as long as you have baby, you're fine. No, you need to have baby all the time. So if you stop giving birth for too long, you stop giving birth for too long, or you delay your pregnancy, you decided to wait till 35 or 40 before you become a mother. That is when you always get caught. You can get caught because you actually got a baby uh, sorry you grow be because you don't grow a baby for so long for 10 20 years of your menstruation life you never even get pregnant your body will grow something else one okay you just have to grow something one you just have to grow baby one breasts have to produce milk one it is not an option you always think women always think childbirth is an option it's not an option your, baby, your body does not allow you that option. So when you don't grow baby, you will grow something else. So you either have fibroid, poly, cyst, endometriosis, 
breast lump, all this will come. So if you don't want to grow baby, and then you also don't want to grow anything on your uterus and ovary, what you must do? You need to be on contraception. You don't want to grow baby, then be on contraception lah. Why ask your husband to use condom? Why ejaculate outside? You know, when you make your husband do all this, oh, yes, it's good for you. Everybody say it's good for you because your husband loves you so much. Your husband don't want you to be on any medication so that you don't have any side effect or medication. But you will grow all this. Oh. You will grow fibroid, you will grow cysts, you grow polyp. You just go around and ask. La. You go and ask people who grow this, grow that one. Ask them what contraception they use. Trust me, it's always husband one. Husband so kind to you, huh? doing all these things for you. Yeah, la, it's good, la, but it doesn't protect you. It doesn't protect you from all these things because you are not given the option not to give birth. Your body does not give you the option. So if you choose not to give birth, if you choose not to give birth, better use something to prevent your pregnancy. So one way, you prevent pregnancy. One way, you prevent growth. You see, ovarian cancer, any birth control that prevent ovulation, prevent ovarian cancer. See, and then uterus cancer, any birth control that has progesterone inside, prevents uterus cancer. And almost all birth control has progesterone inside. So, birth control prevent all these things. So, always remember this. If you don't want to grow a baby, then you need to grow a growth. Your uterus has to grow something else. If you don't want baby, you don't want to grow something else, you need to let your uterus know that I don't want baby, you know. How to let your uterus know that you don't want baby? You need to be on birth control. You need to be the one on birth control, not your husband, okay? So if you want to know more, on uh, various ways of birth control you can go back to my youtube channel uh, which is uh, dr tan city clinic go back to my uh, youtube channel and look for my uh, video on birth control just look for my video on birth control go and look through all the types of birth control available for both men and women look at all the advantages disadvantages the side effects yes all birth control got side effects but at the end of the day Choose the one that you can accept the side effect. Not all side effects are so horrible. I'm very happy in my birth control. I do my own birth control because I don't want to grow anything. My children are already so big. All teenagers already reaching 20. But my uterus is still well and fine because I protect my uterus. Because the moment I didn't want a baby, I took birth control. Not I ask my husband to go on condom though. I take the birth control. But I also think that husband use condom also good lah. Why? Two reasons. All birth control is not 100% ma. So, but whatever you are taking, if your husband use condom, then it's 100%. No? Another advantage is using condom is to prevent infection lah. Okay, because we know that sperm can have infection. Just like HPV also because of all this uh, infection that you get through intercourse. So it's better, better, better. Always better, better, better to use condom as well. So you be on birth control and husband on condom 101%. I always say 101% you won't, don't get pregnant. Okay, so do that. So that's all for my talk on series of uh, uh, gynae cancer. You will realize that I won't be talking on breast cancer. Partly it's because by right, breast cancer is not under gynae lah. Okay, so gynae, uh, we check for breast cancer, we can scan you, we can do everything, but at the end of the day, treatment, everything still goes back to the breast surgeon. There are breast surgeons in this world, no? Long, long ago, there's no breast surgeon, there's gynae. So a lot of gynae do uh, breast as well. And also depends on which country you come from. Because like in US, uh, breast is still under gynae, but uh, now that we have breast surgeon, so we leave it to the breast surgeon, okay? So that's the end of all my series of uh, cancer prevention uh, talk. But I will soon, uh, next week I will give you, I have 
actually over the whole holiday I have attended quite a number of uh, uh, online conferences from overseas uh, US Australia and I got a lot of new knowledge and I feel like sharing with you all so my next few talks will be very much relevant to whatever I I gathered from my uh, my recent uh, conferences so if you have any question now you can always put in in the comment section okay I've not seen your comment section let's see if you have any interesting questions to share with everyone and uh, yeah once again thank you for uh, joining my Sunday 9 p.m. live video okay okay let's look at all the comments Okay, Fatin asked a very interesting question. Although it's breast, it's not related. But uh, she has a breast lump that um, she went to uh, see um, a breast surgeon and the breast surgeon uh, mentioned to her that that, that breast lump is actually in uh, the skin and then she wants to know whether that lump is how to differentiate skin and breast lump. It's very easy, you know, when the lump is on the skin, uh, means you hold on to the lump, uh, you can separate the whole skin from the rest of the things under the skin. So if you have a lump over your breast and you're not sure whether it's skin or not skin, if you just pinch it, uh, it comes out together with the rest of the skin, then it is actually inside the skin, okay? One of you asked, how about singles who have never had sex before? Does it mean that low chance of getting cancer? No, as I told you, you need to have baby if you don't want to have uh, don't want to have cancer so if you have no sex but you miss you don't have baby lo. if you don't have baby then your cancer risk actually go higher okay so even if you decide to be single you still need to scan every year and if you really do not want ovarian cancer to come then better you take some more birth control even though you are not having sex okay I know it doesn't make sense but it does prevent you from cancer. So at the end of the day, you need to ask yourself, how high is your cancer risk? Uh? You need to see your family, you know, how many people get uh, cancer. Then you have to think about how you want to, uh, whether you want to prevent it or not, okay? Okay, Hanasha asks, is BTL a type of birth control that contains progesterone? No. Um, BTL is a uh, tubal ligation. So it's when you ligate your tubes. Uh, tubal ligation um, does not uh, cause um, it doesn't have progesterone now, it's just a surgery but it only prevents ovarian cancer law. it prevents ovarian cancer as I mentioned earlier on but it doesn't pro prevent uh, other cancers okay uterus cancer you can still get because it doesn't have progesterone so I remember there's this lady uterus and then when I say I think you better put Mirina which is progesterone in the uterus then she tell me doctor what for I put I really like it, my tube I say yeah you like it, your tube but you have no progesterone um, in your body and you are not getting pregnant you can still have uh, uterus cancer especially now that your uterus is giving you a lot of problem you have high chance of uh, uterus cancer so even though you have like it, your tube I still need to put you on uh, a progesterone you see to prevent uh, uterus cancer okay uh, Macy asks whether I've seen any bad side effects with cervical cancer. No, never. Uh, we have cervical cancer vaccine already for more than 10 years in Malaysia and I have not seen anyone with any bad side effects. You know, when it first came out, there were a lot of hoo hoo ha ha, a lot of things that reported, but personally, I have not seen anyone who took cervical cancer with bad side effects. Only the initial few years, I do read the reports on it, but nowadays, I don't even see that at all. Okay, so I still um, advise um, people to take that. Okay, uh, Jen Wong asks, I'm in my 50s. Uh, do I need to take birth control? I'm a divorcee. Um, if you're in your 50s and um, depend. Um, if you're in your 50s and your uterus is healthy, your ovary is healthy, everything is healthy and most of you are going to uh, menopause soon, you may not ovulate so much more, uh, not necessary lah, huh? okay? But if you're, let's say you're in your 40s or 30s, then I would still advise you to be on birth control lah. So it's up to you, it's up to you. But if you're going to menopause soon, then not necessary because ovulation, you know, all these things, all until the day you menopause lah. So that's why until the day you menopause, if everything is still good, then high chance is going to be okay. But until the day you menopause, if you have anything that you have inside, you better remove it. Don't keep it until you old age, okay? Um, Macy asks, are genetic 
are gynae cancers genetic so um, there are but not all so we know that 1% of population only will have genetically uh, caused uh, gynae cancers but majority no okay majority is no so every one of us have a chance of getting gynae cancer one okay uh, Hui Yan asks whether IUI or IVF increase the chance of cancer so the whole story is like this Long, long ago, we always say that uh, IUI, IVF, Clomid, all these uh, increase your chance of cancer. Um, if you look at the logic of what I said just now, got to do with the dumb ovulation. So if you were to take uh, pills that make you ovulate a lot, of course, your chances of cancer will go up if so happen during that time when you ovulate, some virus, some bacteria or some uh, 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 toxin does go in. But you can also counteract it by you know, make sure you are on uh, something to prevent uh, you from ovulating in the future. So let's say if you start taking birth control pill now, if you don't want to have any more baby, uh, then that will also protect you. Lah. So because it got to do with the number of times you ovulate, you see, in your lifetime. So that one can be helped. But, uh, but what is proven in research? So that was based on the, the logic that we had. And then so we were very worried at one time. But what we know from research nowadays is uh, it's not true because what happens is a lot of people who cannot get pregnant or difficult to get pregnant, they are the ones who usually do IUI, IVF and take Clomid. So that's why we tend to see this group of people got more cancer. But actually, uh, the real thing is not that reason. It's because a lot of women who cannot get pregnant or very difficult to get pregnant, they actually have unhealthy uterus or ovaries. They already got problem with their uterus or ovaries. That's why very difficult for them to get pregnant. Let's say we know half of the women who cannot get pregnant have endometriosis. Endometriosis can cause ovarian cancer. Ma. So if I got endometriosis, I cannot get pregnant. So I go and do IUI, IVF. Sure, lah, my risk of cancer go up. Not necessarily it's because of my IUI, IVF. It's because of my endometriosis. Oh. So some research nowadays, what they do is they really make sure they separate these two, two groups. You know, you are someone with no problem, but you do IUI, IVF. Uh, you are someone with uh, endometriosis, uh, fibroids, uh, everything, and you also do IUI, IVF. So this group of women have a lot more cancer lah, compared to the general population. But this group of women with no problem with their uterus and ovaries, they actually do not have increased risk of cancer compared to the general population, okay? Belinda asks here, yeah, can I say either take HPV vaccine or birth control pill? Can I say either one will do or need both? Uh, just to be clear, birth control pill is to prevent ovarian cancer. HPV is mainly to prevent cervical cancer. It's not either, though, it's both. Because even though HPV can pre prevent ovarian cancer, but it doesn't prevent all the ovarian cancer, you need to prevent the ovarian cancer caused by HPV virus. But there are a lot more other viruses and a lot more other toxins and bacteria that can still go into the uterus to cause cancer, okay? So no, it's actually both. Uh, Tan Sim, I asked why is my CA125 slightly high, like uh, 4 to 5 unit higher than average? Do I need to take note of anything? Yes, um, Tan Sima, you must understand this. So I didn't cover CA 125 earlier on. Okay, a lot of people do CA 125, which is a cancer marker in their blood test. But number one, you need to know that is not an early sign of cancer at all. Uh, CA 125 can go up for many reasons, but it usually go up also because your uh, uterus or ovary is not healthy. But if let's say you only go up a little bit, maybe not necessary you have problem lah. But if let's say it's double like 70, 80 or hundreds, then of course definitely there's something wrong with you lah. So the question is what's wrong only lah. So very often most of you will just go for ultrasound scan and then we scan there's nothing. So we just monitor the CA125. But ultrasound nothing doesn't mean it's nothing. No. Like I always uh, mentioned in many many of my videos earlier on on endometriosis, because the majority of endometriosis got a normal ultrasound scan, and endometriosis is very very commonly uh, linked to higher CA125. This is sometimes just by treating your endometriosis. Say I give you medication for six months endometriosis, then your CA125 can come down one. So even though your ultrasound is normal. But your CA125 come down because of the medicine. Why? Because actually you got endometriosis. But you don't know you got endometriosis. So CA125 is high for many reasons. Even infection of the uterus also, it can cause 
high CA125. Uh, fibro also cause high CA125. Cis also cause high CA125, but doesn't mean it's still to cancer. Lah. Okay, so that is not really a form of prevention of uh, ovarian cancer. You want to prevent ovarian cancer, you need to, uh, if you want secondary prevention, no? primary prevention I mentioned, but secondary prevention, that means you want early detection, it's not blood test, it's yearly C gyne for ultrasound. Okay? C gyne. Ah. Li Xiang asks, can you take vex, uh, HPV vaccine after some years? You need to retake. You don't need to retake. You take one is enough unless you want to take the latest one because it covers more virus. Because the old one only either two virus or four virus. You must understand we have a vaccine that cover two virus, cover four virus or cover nine virus. So if you want to cover more viruses, it's the latest one. So some of you may get the two virus or the four virus one. Like for example, if you send your child to school, uh, school is only giving the two virus one. So that's actually not enough. So like my daughter, she goes to school. School want to give the two virus, I still the teacher no need. It's okay, I give the nine one, okay? Because two is not enough, I'll give her nine. So uh, if your daughter is in school, I think it's better you still go and visit your guy need to get the nine virus one. Because two is the outdated one. But of course, uh, got two better than don't have lah because that two is also uh, quite strong viruses that cause a lot lot cancer okay uh, Ronnie Ro Jennifer Ronnie asked that if I use IUCD do I still need to take birth control pill uh, not necessary because actually uh, IUD also in a way protect you from ovarian cancer because IUD actually also try to clear off all the virus and toxins it is a way of blocking it from coming in. That's why we know that if you use IUCD, even a cervical cancer also less one because uh, you can get rid of HPV virus better when you have IUCD inside your body compared to if you don't have. The reason is actually quite simple because IUCD, IUCD is copper wire. So if you have copper wire in your uterus, right, your body is working very, very, very hard to fight the copper wire because the body think that the copper wire is a virus or something foreign that is not good for your body. So the body is actually fighting very hard to fight the copper virus. As a result, your immune in your uterus, your immune system in your uterus become better. And as a result of the immune become better, that is when you get all the side effects of IUD. No? You ask me what are the side effects of IUD? A lot of discharge. Why a lot of discharge? What is vaginal discharge? Vaginal discharge very often is due to uh, white blood cell that is dead, dead white blood cell. Dead white blood cell causes pus. That's why you have discharge. So some people don't like IUD because it causes a lot of discharge. But it's the discharge that is protecting you in a way, lah, in a way. So it does prevent cancer up to a certain extent. So it's better than not doing anything, lah. Uh, so of course, if you use IUD, then you do not need to take a, a birth control pill. I mean, there is some form of protection, although it's not hundred percent, but. One, we know ovarian cancer, if you really, really want to prevent ovarian cancer, specifically, it's still birth control pill. Lah. Because that is the one that is really, really uh, research proven. For IUD, you may reduce, but it's not 100% won't get. Lah, okay? Pearly Lim asks, after hysterectomy, without removing the ovaries, need to take birth control pill to prevent ovarian cancer? Not necessary, because as I mentioned earlier, uh, by removing your uterus, you're already preventing ovarian cancer already. So your chances of developing ovarian cancer is a lot lower already. Okay? Fatin asking about supplements. A lot of you like to ask me to talk about supplements. Will birth control pill cause brain tumour? Never heard of no such thing, okay? Whatever you're saying is probably not true. Uh, whatever you heard is probably not true. Okay, birth control pill does not cause brain tumour. Nothing to do with it. Uh, Mirina, can, do you need to go? If you're already on Mirina, do you need to go on HPV vaccination? Um, yes, nothing. Uh, it is still... Everyone needs the HPV vaccination. It doesn't matter whether you're on Mirina or anything else. Because Mirina prevents uh, uterus cancer. It does not prevent cervical cancer. It does prevent a bit just like the way IUD works. But it's, it's not fully prevention. A better prevention would still be HPV vaccination. Fatin asks if uh, HPV vaccine is available in my clinic. Yes, we have the 9 vaccine one. Night virus one. Erin asks, can yeast infection cause ovarian cancer? We so far uh, do not have any research to say that yeast infection cause ovarian cancer, so I don't think so. Lah. Number two, why I also don't think so. I think every woman in this world also 
have yeast infection at least once in their lifetime is so common so I don't think so but I did mention earlier on that ovarian cancer is in the rise why ovarian cancer in the rise is also because uh, women nowadays have less children and women nowadays also breastfeed less than women previously so that's why ovarian cancer is in the rise because those days is cervical cancer number one uterus cancer number two ovarian cancer number three but nowadays is uterus cancer number one ovarian cancer number two and uterus cancer is now last already so ovarian cancer has already beat overtake uterus cancer it's not that uterus cancer is uh, getting less and less but rather uh, ovarian cancer is getting more and more Marcy asked if HPV vaccine is effective HPV vaccine is effective if there are a few things lah. it's more effective if you take it younger that's why we give to little kids when they are in form 1 and it is so effective as long as you haven't got the infection before so you see although we can uh, take the HPV va vaccine when you're 45 or 40 but maybe out of the 9 viruses you already infected by 1 or 2 before that then of course it doesn't protect that 1 or 2 anymore but it still can protect the rest and because of age factor the vaccine also doesn't work as well lah, compared to the ones who are younger so if you are younger especially for your daughters it's better to take lah. but for you I would still say you still it's good to take it doesn't give you 90% protection maybe it can still give you 60 to 70 you know because 60 to 70 better than don't have law because cervical cancer is very common uh, number one the number one killer in women in Malaysia is breast cancer number two is cervical so it is very very common uh, the virus is very common in our population long long ago when I um, before the vaccine started actually I see uh, three to four cases every week one so nowadays I don't see so much all this uh, HPV uh, viral infection so common anymore I may see like um, still I can see five to ten cases a month now but I used to see like three to five cases every week so it has come down with the vaccination now of course it's effective yes Hanasha and ONG once told you that in the 20, 20s is the best time to get pregnant yes same I also tell that to my patients every day you know when I ask them when you're getting pregnant when you're getting married they just all laugh there was a few patients some are very cute you know doctor you find me one husband ah those days my brother used to be single I say can ah my brother but if you don't mind him, like I say my brother very fussy, very stubborn. Okay, but now no, my brother is married already, happily married. Okay, so okay, so that's all the questions you I can see uh, for from all of you today. Thank you once again for joining me today in my uh, 9 p.m. live video. So see you next week again same day same time and uh, i will have a lot more i already have a few more topics lined up for the next uh, whole month so do stay tuned again next sunday 9 pm thank you and bye bye